Hi, my name is Ian Fogarty, and I'd like to talk to you today about aromatics. In the last video that we had, we talked about multiple cycloenes, and so we called this one cyclohexene, and we called this one, two, three, four, five, six, one, four, cyclo hexadiene and we call this one three one two three cyclo hexadiene and then finally we got to the main topic one two three four five six one three five cyclohexa triene and in the last video we said that although this name matches that structure this shows up so often and is so special that it gets its own name and so that's the topic of, of today turns out that we are pretty good as chemists and scientists at predicting how strong and stable molecules are we can predict ahead of time how much energy it's going to take to completely destroy this this molecule by doing a little bit of math so we can go and say well there's a carbon carbon bond here there's a carbon carbon double bond there there's some carbon hydrogen single bonds we can do some addition and do some math and we can figure out how much energy it's going to take to destroy that and it turns out we're really good at it and we can do some predictions here really well and when we get to this one it's not simply a matter of saying well we went from one double bond to two double bonds and not only do we have two double bonds that are kind of side by side but now we have three it's more important than that and it turns out that this structure is much more stable than it really should be and that is why it's so special and that's what we're going to investigate right now we have two rings uh, on the bottom left we have cyclohexane and so that's a c6h12 and in a minute you'll be able to see all those 12 hydrogens on the right hand side we have benzene c6h6 or some people might call it 135 cyclohexatriene and so this video is just going to show a quick uh, demonstration of its three-dimensionality so you can see the cyclohexane how it's got some three-dimensionality to it so you have some axial and some equatorial hydrogens whereas with the benzene it's flat perfectly flat and this has major implications for its biological activity and for the way it behaves There's a space filling model, it looks kind of interesting. So looking at the 3D structure of this, you have cyclohexane here, and it's got some hydrogens that are sticking out, up and out, and down and out, and up and out, and down and out, and up and out. And, and so these are called axial, the ones that point up and down, and then these ones are called equatorial. The ones that kind of point on the end but the important part is that they're sp3 hybridized and it's 109.5 degrees bond angles here we have something slightly different and it's the ring that's really concerning we have these two double bonds two double bonds two double bonds when you have a double bond each carbon in this has a p orbital it's kind of shaped like this if you remember from chemistry 11 a p orbital and so if you put those all together you end up with this situation the bond angles here are 120 degrees and it's flat it's sp2 hybridized but it does something special these p orbitals that all of a sudden have electrons there and electrons in there and electrons in there and the same happens on the bottom it gets kind of messy um, you end up with these p orbitals that are all in line and something very special happens when you have these p orbitals that are all in line like this here we have benzene and so we've shown the hydrogens we've shown the double bonds and there we go 
Now, because these P orbitals are all lined up, something magical can happen. And we can have this double bond right here. We can have this double bond here move over to there. And if we do that, we end up with something like this. Now there's a couple problems here. Each Remember, each carbon wants to have four bonds and four bonds only. It wants to have a full octet. And so this carbon right here has one bond, two bond, three bonds, four bonds. It's okay. This carbon has one, two, three, four. That's okay. One, two, three, four. That's okay. This one has one, two, three, four, five. Five bonds. That's not okay. And it has a negative charge. This one, this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. It's okay. This one only has three that's not okay. So there's a problem here and there's a problem here. It's got a positive charge. Well, let's just not worry about those problems for a little bit and let's move on. Now it's impossible for this carbon right here to have five bonds because it has no d orbital. And so that's definitely going to be a problem. So what happens if we were to move this, move this double bond to here? What happens if we move this double bond to here? that would give us this structure. And if we start counting up our octets and our bonds, this carbon has four, this carbon has four bonds, that's good. This carbon has four bonds. Now this is the problem. So we have a negative charge here, and this carbon has five bonds. Again, it can't have five bonds. It doesn't have any d, orbital, d orbitals, so that's a problem. All we've done is move the problem from this carbon up here to this carbon down there. We just passed the buck a bit. And this carbon still has uh, an empty looking for a, a bond. Well, what happens if we move this to here, then we would end up with this structure, which looks remarkably similar to this one. It's just that the bonds have all rotated one. And magically, we now have every carbon having four bonds. And so all of our problems have gone away. So the bond can't move from here to here because it causes a problem there and there. And this one can't move from here to here because it causes a problem there. So they, they can't move by themselves. However, if they all move at the same time, if they all go ready switch, then you end up going from this structure to this structure, both of which are good. And the advantage to that is, is now you have these electrons that can spin. They can spin and run around this little treadmill and uh, we can learn a little later on that this is a, a good thing. Electrons might be a little bit claustrophobic and giving them a chance to spin on a little treadmill is very stabilizing. We're gonna call this resonance. The atoms don't move, but the electrons do. The electrons move uh, bonds. And we're gonna come up with a second place where this shows up again a little later on. So we have this little double-headed arrow like this to show that it looks like this and then a split second later it looks like that. And so we often get um, in a hurry and we don't bother writing these double bonds. So what we do is we write something that looks like this with a circle in it. And that circle just shows that there's double bonds in here and they are rotating. And the reason they are allowed to rotate is because those P orbitals are all in a row. And this is what's called aromaticity. Aromatic. It was first talked about aromatic because many of the compounds that have this do have a, a, a fragrance to it, either a nice flower fragrance or sometimes a nasty odor. Okay, and so this little circle here denotes that it's aromatic. The structures that we're going to deal with aromatic are all look like benzene, although there are other lots of other options out there too. We want to look at uh, degrees of unsaturation, and so how many degrees of unsaturation is there in a benzene ring? Well, we've got six carbons. So if it's going to follow the rule CnH2n plus 2, it should be 14. And if we actually go and draw in our hydrogens so that each carbon has four bonds, so this is going to be C6H6. So we're off by eight hydrogens. I would normally have expected C6H14. I've got C6H6. That's eight hydrogens. It takes two hydrogens for every degree of unsaturation. So that means there should be four degrees of unsaturation. Four degrees of unsaturation in every benzene ring. We get one degree of unsaturation from that double bond, one degree of unsaturation from that double bond, a third degree of unsaturation from that double bond, and then a fourth one from the ring. 
benzene can have branches. And so this would be called methylbenzene. But again, we see this so often, it's called toluene. And it shows up in lots of adhesives and glues. This is another way of drawing methylbenzene or toluene. So here's my methylbenzene, but we could have multiple options. We could have a two, so this would be called, following our, our numbering, one, two, one, two, dimethylbenzene. However, we've decided to uh, shorten things a little bit, and so we might call this ortho. And ortho would take the place of the one, two, ortho dimethyl benzene. Well, that's not much shorter, so we often just so O dimethylbenzene. And so the O denotes something that is one, two substituted on a benzene ring. Well, here we have one, three. And so one comma three dimethylbenzene. However, we could also call this meta and, or M. And if we were typing this out, we would make sure that the ortho and the O and the M and the meta all were in italics. Here we have one, four dimethyl benzene, also known as para or P. And so the para on the P would get italicized. Thank you very much for your time.